Okay, welcome to our third example on hydrostatic pressure. Now this one is going to be a fun one because this is a very, very classic problem in a lot of physics and fluid mechanics classes. So I thought we'd go over it so you guys get a good understanding of hydrostatic pressure and how to use it in different applications. So in this scenario, we have this submarine here that's at, at some depth D below sea level. So this is sea level right here. At the very top, obviously, if we're at sea level, the pressure on that surface is 1 atm or 101.3 kilopascals. And on the submarine, we have a tiny little window. Now I've drawn the window here in a little bit of an expanded view, and it's basically a 20 centimeter wide window. And the depth or the thickness of this window is eight centimeters. Now, the window itself can withstand a maximum force of 1 times 10 to the 6 newtons or 1 million newtons of force. So if you were to apply a force that's greater than 1 million newtons, then this window would crack and break and all the water would come inside the submarine and that would be very, very bad. So the question is asking, what is the maximum depth here, this depth D, that the submarine can travel if the pressure inside of the submarine is maintained at 1 atm. So the pressure inside of the submarine is going to be the same as the pressure at sea level, which is 1 atm. Now the mass density of seawater is about 1030 kilograms per meter cubed. And we have our hydrostatic pressure equation here, P equals P naught plus rho G D to help us out if we need it. I'm just kidding, we are absolutely gonna need it because this is a hydrostatic pressure example. Okay, so before we even get to this hydrostatic equation, I really wanna talk about the window because this is the most important part about this problem. So if I were to draw this window from a side view, it would look something like this, right? We have some thickness of a window. This window is 20 centimeters uh, wide and it has a thickness of eight centimeters. Now, let's say on the left side of this window, that is inside of the submarine. So inside of the submarine, we're gonna have a P or a pressure of one ATM, and I'm just gonna call this P in. And then on the outside or on the right side, we're gonna have P out, which is in the water, right? So. P in, the pressure on the inside of the submarine that's being exerted on this window, that is going to be equal to P naught, which is going to be maintained at 1 atm or 101.3 kilopascals. Now, P out, pressure out, is going to be what the pressure is for this submarine at this depth D inside of this ocean that the submarine is in. So P out is really going to be equal to P naught plus rho G D, right? There is our hydrostatic equation. Because we know that the area of the window, or I'm sorry, the diameter of the window is 20 centimeters here, what we can actually do is if we can calculate the maximum pressure that the window can experience due to the max force that it can experience, right? So what I'm saying is P max, which is pressure is equal to F over A, force over area. So F max over the area of the window. Now, the area of the window is simply pi R squared and R is going to be this half of this 20 centimeters, which is 10 centimeters, and 10 centimeters converted into meters is 0 0.1 meters. So that is going to be the area of this window. So P max is really gonna be F max over pi times 0 0.10 meters squared. Okay, let's make sure we understand what this P max is, right? So if we take a look at this diagram, this side diagram of this window, we know that we have a P in, the pressure on the inside of the submarine, and a pressure out, which is the pressure outside of the submarine at depth 
D. Now the pressure inside is equal to P naught, which is 1 atm. That's equal to 101.3 kilopascals. So you can see from this diagram right here that if the pressure inside of the submarine was equal to the pressure outside of the submarine, then the net pressure acting on this window is going to be zero, right? So this P max that we're looking at here is really the difference of pressure between P out and P in. In other words, pressure max is really the difference between the pressure out minus the pressure in. Okay, well, this is interesting, right? Because we did say here that P in is equal to P naught. So I could rewrite this equation as P max is equal to P out, which is currently unknown, right? Minus P in, which is P naught, right? Because of this. Now, if we take a look at our hydrostatic pressure equation, we can see P out and P naught in this equation, right? P out and P naught. So in yellow, if I were to rewrite this equation, that would be P out, so I'm actually just gonna write it here first, is P naught plus rho G D, right? So if I took P naught out from both sides, I would get P out minus P naught is equal to rho G D. Well, what do you know? We have this P max equals P out minus P naught, and then we have this P out minus P naught, you can very clearly see that this term is equal to this term, right? P out minus P naught, P out minus P naught. So really, when we're looking at these two equations, we can actually say that rho GD is equal to P max, right? Because this term is equal to this term. So I'm gonna move this down a little bit so we can see. So what I'm really trying to say is that this thing right here, you can see that they're both equal, right? So I can actually rewrite this whole thing as being P max is equal to P out minus P naught, which is equal to rho G D. Or in other words, P max is equal to rho G D. Well, we know what P max is, right? P max is right here. P max, which is F max, over the area of the window, which is pi times 0 0.10 meters squared, is equal to rho, which is 1,030 kilograms per meter cubed, times gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared, times D. And this D is the max depth that we're looking at, right? The max depth that this submarine right here can travel before the window starts cracking, right? Okay, so we also know that this F max is really one times 10 to the sixth newtons, or just one million newtons, right? That is the force max. So I'm not going to plug that in, but if you were to plug in F max, which is one million newtons, pi times 0.1 meters squared, and then set that equal to this term right here, we can essentially solve for D. Now, D is going to equal about 3140 meters, or about 3.14 kilometers. So if I were in that submarine, I probably wouldn't go past about three kilometers, just to be safe, right? I don't wanna go right up to 3.14 kilometers. Staying at about three kilometers would ensure that the window would not crack.